<laughs> Sorry, before we start, let us say, first of all, welcome to everybody. Um, thank you all very much for coming to this celebration of the college as it was in the, uh, in the, under the presidency of Robert Honeycomb. It's very good to see you here. Um, and of course, this is the second in our series of events arranged to welcome back people associated with previous presidents. So last year we started with the Pippard years and we move on to Robert Honeycomb this year. <laughs> now, of course, I never knew him, and I hope that you can all tell me something about him, and you would all have known him much better. <laughs> so, but the second thing is to thank um, life members generally. The college relies on life members for support. The life members are the, the lifeblood of the college. And it's not simply financial support, it's also personal support. Clare Hall, almost uniquely in Cambridge colleges, is a college which depends upon its people in Cambridge, outside Cambridge. Um, it's the people who represent what the college is. And as I travel around, um, around the world for development office arranged events, the life members events, um, there is such a wonderful feeling of belonging to the college and I hope you all feel that you too belong to the college and it really is a wonderful place so I'm not going to keep you any longer except to say thank you and I think John is going to say a few words right now I hope yeah lovely thanks very much thank you very much for that um, offering well thank you for inviting me and uh, Welcome to a nice, uh, it reminds me of the uh, summer of 1976 when I was here. I, was in, I grew up in California, went to MIT, came over here in 75 to do my PhD in materials, hence the Robert Honeycomb connection. And it was quite interesting that I uh, came here in the, in the winter of 75 was fantastic, the summer of 76 was fantastic, and I didn't understand any of his comments about the horrible British weather. <laughs> and then I had 30 years of it. <laughs> so I, I got the message eventually. It, it took a while to sink in. Sink in. Um, uh, lived in Elmside in 75 and 76, and then because there's not a lot of room in, in, in the college, we had to all scatter the off of Chesterton Road. Uh, it's just really fantastic that the the effect of MIT was quite um, a unique university. And then I came over here and I thought, oh my goodness, I'd be wearing gowns and doing everything. And with my wife Lisa there, uh, at, she's a vice president of Queens. I've learned to uh, wear gowns and, and a hood and be proper. But I remember my years at Clare Hall were, were pretty loose. There, it was it was relaxed. And I eventually bought a gown when I graduated. I think I, did, I went four years without having to own a gown, which, which strikes me as being rather unusual. Uh, the the, the Elmside story is fantastic. It was it was a wonderful building. It was effectively, I think, about the only, uh, then correct me, did we have any other housing for students other than Elmside back in the that early 70s? That was it, wasn't it? Yeah, and we had a croquet pitch outside, and, and we had a little bar that was very, the, the college bar, which was always an honor bar, and you just went in there and signed up for it. and. Um, a very good friend of mine, Kirk Huffman, you, some of you might remember Kirk Huffman, uh, he in, encouraged so many of his friends from the town to spend their money at Queens, uh, sorry, not Queens, sorry, Clare Hall, <laughs> uh, dare I say that, <laughs> excuse me, at Clare Hall, that, that we actually had the Kirk Huffman Memorial uh, Bar Award for the people who spent the most money. And, and when Kirk left, we were quite concerned that the, the college bar would go bust. Um, other than that, uh, Robert and, 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 and Juni were, were, June were, were great people. Uh, they were uh, definitely transitional. Yeah, they, he was very, very important in the material science department. He's probably the king of steels. I mean, he probably, he probably wrote the, all the fundamental textbooks on, on steel. I'd just like to say that uh, it's, I've been away from Clare Hall for quite a while. I lived 15 years down in Devon. Um, I've, I've come back up to this part of the world. I only live in Story's Way. And it's nice to see how much this, this, this college has expanded. It's, it's really, I just, just remember it just being like really Elmside and a few of the um, ski lodge houses, we used to call them. And, and that was about it. And, and now it's really grown and it's really fantastic to see the growth. Thank you very much.
Thank you. <laughs> have another speech. Uh, <laughs> but like the two which have gone before, it will be brief. But this is uh, Professor Lindsay Greer, um, who just wants to say a few words about Robert Honeycomb himself. And it's quite appropriate we should have something about Robert. So, Lindsay, thanks very much. Well, thank you very much, President. Um, so I'm uh, Lindsay Greer. I, I uh, am a, we, in the modern world, we'd probably say material scientist, but uh, Robert Honeycomb himself would have said metallurgist, and I'm quite happy to be a card-carrying metallurgist myself. Um, uh, I did natural sciences at Cambridge, and I now realise that I was a first-year undergraduate in the same year that Robert Honeycomb would have become president of Clare Hall. Um, I then went through the system, at some point became head of the, by then, materials department, and now I'm head of the School of Physical Sciences, which looks after materials as well as seven other departments on that side of the university. And I put that in just to, by way of apology, for being late for what was probably my intended speaking slot. <laughs> as um, head of school, I was performing head of school duties, um, chairing what is called the project board for the project to put up the new building for the Cavendish Laboratory. Uh, a, a mere 300 million pound project when they hope to move in by 2022. New buildings will feature in the story of Robert Honeycomb. Um, let me say uh, he uh, should always be associated with Joan, who was a metallurgist in her own right, uh, working at the Welding Institute. Am I got the name right? June. 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 Thank you. I was thinking it doesn't sound quite right. Thank you. June. Um, and she was, of course, a serious metallurgist in her own right at the Welding Institute after they'd moved from Australia. But uh, Australia, they'd already been involved in serious metallurgy doing reverse engineering on parts rescued from shot down Japanese planes to reverse engineer the, the alloys in the Second World War. Uh, then a move to the UK, uh, Robert uh, advancing very rapidly, very young as a professor in Sheffield, and then very young as Goldsmith's professor in Cambridge. Uh, so it means at that stage people were appointed to the professorship and uh, it was automatically associated with the head of department. So he is by far our longest serving head of department. He must have served for nearly 20 years uh, as head. Um, he came in in arguably rather difficult times because the department had just had Sir Alan Cottrell, FRS, as its head and was much in love with Alan Cottrell, who then moved off into government service, and they were sort of feeling the lack, uh, and Robert had to come in without a knighthood and without an FRS. But uh, such as he was, he collected both in due course uh, and led the department to greater and greater things, including a new building, which at that time uh, was uh, a landmark um, uh, of the brutalist style, as we now know it, uh, on uh, Corn Exchange Street, the main entrance from the new museum site. Um, that building uh, would have been completed around 1969 and uh, has now been wonderfully refurbished that we've left it, and it's now the David Attenborough Building. And actually, it starts to look, in my opinion, really quite attractive in its refurbished, but still somewhat faithful to the original form. Uh, so Robert was responsible for that building. Um, I feel for him somewhat, since I, in due course, was responsible for our move to our present new building out at West Cambridge uh, in 2013. And in our new building, we're very pleased to have a Robert Honeycomb room. Uh, and we were very happy that Robert's daughter came along uh, to open it for us, and she was absolutely delighted. Um, I think I shouldn't say more, really, except to say that um, he was an extremely distinguished man and uh, very engaging to be with, and so I'm very grateful to have interacted with him, and I'm sure he did brilliant things for Clare Hall as well as for the department and his discipline. Thank you. Thank you.